Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Continuing our explorations in the joys of coding and learning things that involve computers, the internet, and the web. But I guess those last two are kind of synonyms of each other, so let's ignore that for now. This episode is a continuing part of our multi-part series of learning TypeScript. Learning TypeScript together, TypeScript of course being the superset of JavaScript that adds static types to JavaScript. Today's episode is going to be delving into getting a local working repo that you can actually start playing with TypeScript on your local computer. Uh, it's going to be a pretty brief episode, but what I want to just do with you so that we can then build on this episode for the next episode. The next episode is actually going to show you how to use Babel to write TypeScript code. Um, I think it'd be kind of fun to just show that because you can actually use Babel to transpile TypeScript back down to regular JavaScript. But this episode is just gonna be delving directly with the TypeScript CLI itself, showing you how to initialize a new TypeScript project on your local computer and getting up and running on pretty much getting some types going in your JavaScripts. So the first thing that we wanna do is actually get TypeScript installed on our computer. And the easy way to do that is by NPM, everybody's favorite NPM uh, package manager. So that kind of redundant to say. Uh, you do npm install dash g. That took no time at all because I've already installed TypeScript. That's great. And then what you're given from that is a nice little CLI called TSC, the TypeScript compiler. That is the primary way that you actually interact with the TypeScript project is via the TSC CLI uh, program. When you're in TSC, by default, you get all this help information. You got to do TSC dash dash help. And there's a lot of arguments here to the TSC command line uh, uh, program, but the one that I'm mostly interested in right now for the use cases of this video is this one right here, which is dash dash init. Uh, I think it's healthy to start a TypeScript project with um, a tsconfig.json file, which is a way to actually define the behaviors for a TypeScript project. So we're going to run tsc dash dash init, and what we're going to get over here is a nice little tsconfig.json file. Now a tsconfig.json file is the way in which you can configure how the TypeScript compiler works on your TypeScript project. There's a bunch of options here. Uh, and in this video, I'm gonna actually talk about a few of them because I think that it's important for you to have kind of a basic knowledge of what they are. Um, but first, before I actually start going into this, let's actually make our first TypeScript file. So I'm gonna make a touch index.ts. Uh, something to be very important to remember, which always bites me is that TypeScript requires you to use a .ts extension when writing a TypeScript uh, program. So when you run types, so when you're actually creating your files, you actually have to use .ts extensions for that. Let's open up this index.ts file, and then what we're going to do is just make our simple little, you know, we're going to say greeting. We're going to say this is a string. Console log. We're going to say hello name. Uh, don't get too hung up about the uh, TypeScript syntax. That's not the point of this video. This video is just to show you how to actually make the project work locally. I'm going to say greeting. We're going to say uh, YouTube. And we're gonna save that. Cool. So now that we have our first TypeScript file, we wanna do two things. Uh, one, we wanna actually compile it to actually get it into actual JavaScript code that we could run in the browser. And two, we actually wanna start seeing uh, type information as we go. So for the first one, to actually to transpile this down to uh, uh, JavaScript, we're actually gonna use the TSC command line argument again. And then by default, because we have a tsconfig.json file, when you run TSC, by default, it'll see that the current directory you're in has a ts.config.json file. That was really hard to say. And it'll use the information in that file to actually transpile your .ts file. Um, if you want to, you could also specify just the actual file that you want to transpile. So if you want to start with uh, index.ts, I could just say just transpile index.ts. And what it'll do here is it'll actually make a new index.js file. And then you can see the output right there. Uh, again, if I were to just do tsc.c and run that, it's recompiled, and you see it added use strict, that's due to some of the extra configuration in the tsconfig.json file itself. Now, one of the things that is interesting in the ways that you can configure uh, TypeScript is how it actually transpiles your TypeScript code to JavaScript, and that's in this target configuration option. Uh, this has ES5 by default, and because the, by default it's ES5, when I actually transpile this template string down, it actually is stripping out the template string because an ES5 browser environment doesn't actually know how to how template strings work. So instead, what I could do if I wanted to is change this to be an ES2015, saying that I'm targeting a uh, 2015 browser environment, and that 
all the features that are included in ES 2015 should also be transpiled down. So when I actually run this through, you can see now that the template strings are actually included by default. And there's some other options in here as well. You can specify what module system you want to use. Um, you can also configure the strictness of TypeScript. And this is um, something that's really nice that TypeScript defaults to being as strict as possible. If you start a project without any strictness enabled and you start going along, going more, 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 uh, at some point you might want to add more strict typing at that later point in time, which might be much more difficult than if you were to start it right at the beginning. So this is a nice sensible default. You always turn it off to make the incremental adoption of TypeScript a little bit not as painful, but it's nice to have this be a nice simple default. And there's more ways to configure how TypeScript works. Uh, you can actually configure the uh, output uh, file folder, which I think is kind of nice to know that all the built files are going to be in one folder location. So I can just say this is going to go into uh, disk. So now when we actually run TSC, you can see that it's actually making a new folder dot this with the content of that. So let's do that so I don't get confused. So cool, this is cool, this is working. Um, but now let's kind of uh, run this in a more interactive way. And you can do that via passing in uh, watch. And this actually will start up the touch compiler in watch mode. So it'll actually compile it as you go. So we can say YouTube, uh, we'll see YouTube live. And I'll save that and it'll automatically include that right there. So actually let's do that right there. Uh, nope, this side, right there. So as I change this, it's gonna transpile it over there and see it there, cool. Now also let's talk about the type side of things. Uh, now if I were to say greeting a one, uh, because I said that I'm passing in the wrong typed argument for this function. Um, in this function I'm saying that name has to be a string, but here I'm passing a number. So now if I save that, I'm getting an error in both my editor, which is VS Code, which has uh, TypeScript support built in, but also in the watch argument as well. If you don't actually use a editor that doesn't have TypeScript support built in or, or a plugin, now you can actually see that in your browser as well. So it's saying that argument of type one is not assignable to a parameter of type string. And it's saying right here, this is what you got to fix. So if I were to just, uh, it's still transpiling it down, which is uh, neat to see, but the typed information is wrong. So actually I can quote this now, and then it'll just nice and be happy right there. So that's kind of the very quick and dirty getting up and running with the TypeScript compiler using just the TypeScript uh, CLI itself. Uh, stay tuned to the next video. I'm gonna talk a little bit how, about how you could do this with Babel if you wanted to. Um, if you do prefer just to stay in the Babel environment, you can actually do that and actually have Babel understand TypeScript code, but then deal with the type checking out of bounds, not with Babel itself. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully that made uh, some good sense and made you a little bit less afraid to actually get started with a TypeScript uh, project. Again, this is a very brief example. Uh, we'll get into more about how TypeScript works itself in later videos, but that's kind of your uh, introduction to TypeScript uh, as a project. So uh, hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you around next week with more videos coming at you.